All right, friends, it's time for the next chapter of The World According to Humphrey. We're on chapter 12 today, which is called Peace Breaks Out. Early in the morning, Ty, Dee Lee, and AJ raced downstairs and played Crazy Eights. Later, they ran outside and threw a football around the yard. The Thomases were having breakfast with Bo when the phone rang. Mr. Thomas talked for a few minutes, but was saying, Uh-huh, that's fine. When he hung up, he told Mrs. Thomas, We're going to have a visitor, but don't tell Anthony James. Ooh, a mystery. I like mysteries because they are fun to solve. Then again, I don't like mysteries because I don't like not knowing what's going on. So I waited and waited. <clears throat> a few hours later, the doorbell rang. The visitor turned out to be Garth Tugwell and his father. I really appreciate this, Mr. Tugwell told the Thomases. It was Mrs. Brisbane's idea. Since Garth can't have Pumphrey at our house right now, she suggested that he could help AJ take care of him over here. Sounds like Mrs. Brisbane. As if I'm trouble to take care of. But Garth had been crying because he couldn't have me, so maybe, maybe, she was trying to be nice. After Mr. Tugwell left, Mr. Thomas called AJ in. AJ ran into the room and practically backed out again when he saw Garth. We have a guest, said Mr. Thomas. Shake hands, Anthony. Garth is here to help you take care of Humphrey. AJ and Garth reluctantly shook hands. How come? asked AJ. Garth shrugged his shoulders. Mrs. Brisbane said to him, Well, come on, we'll clean this cage and get it over with, A.J. said. The boys didn't talk much while they cleaned the cage, but they started giggling when they cleaned up my potty corner. I don't know why that makes everybody giggle. After they stopped giggling, they started talking and kidding around. They decided to let me out of the cage, so they took a set of old blocks from Dee Lee's room and built me a huge maze. I love mazes! When we were all tired of that game, AJ offered to teach Garth to play Crazy Eights, and then Ty and Dee Lee joined them in a game of Go Fish. Nobody mentioned the TV. Nobody shot any rubber bands. Later in the afternoon, the kids were all outside playing football. I was fast asleep until Mrs. Thomas came into the den with a broom and started sweeping. A minute later, Mr. Thomas entered. What are you doing, hon? What does it look like? I'm sweeping. You know, all the snacking we do in here makes a real mess on the floor, she said. Bo's asleep, her husband asked. Uh-huh. Mr. Thomas walked over to his wife and took the broom away from her. Then you sit down and rest a spell, hon. I'll sweep. Go on. Don't argue. Mrs. Thomas smiled and thanked him and sat down on the couch. Mr. Thomas swept all around the outside of the room, even behind the TV. Uh-oh. When he got there, he stopped sweeping and leaned down. Hmm. Well, I'll be, he muttered. What's wrong? asked Mrs. Thomas. The TV is unplugged, he said. It's unplugged! He came out from behind the TV, plug in hand and a very puzzled look on his face. But it couldn't have just come unplugged while we were sitting here watching. I mean, a plug just doesn't fall out, he said. Well, plug it in, see if it works. His wife told him. Well, you guessed it. The TV came on as bright and loud as ever. Hmm, I don't get it, said Mr. Thomas. But at least we don't have to pay to get it fixed. Mrs. Thomas stared at the screen for a few seconds, then glanced out the window at the kids playing happily outside. Charlie, why do you say we keep it unplugged for a couple more days, she asked. We just won't tell the kids. Mr. Thomas grinned. Then he bent down and unplugged the TV. Couldn't hurt, he said. He put the broom down he put the broom down and sat on the couch near his wife, and the two of them just sat there in the den, giggling, well, like stop giggling Gail. Suddenly Mr. Thomas looked over at me. You don't mind a little piece of quiet, do you, Humphrey? No, 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 I squeaked, and I promptly fell asleep. There were a lot Sorry, things were a lot better when AJ, Garth, and I returned to room 26. No rubber bands flew through the air. Garth didn't cheer up anybody or make fun of anybody. That meant Gail didn't get in trouble for giggling. 
Heidi didn't get in trouble for speaking without raising her hand because she was trying to tell Mrs. Brisbane what Garth had done. But the best change was Saya, who did raise her hand every single time. One day, she raised her hand to volunteer to stay in during recess to clean the chalkboard. Miranda raised her hand, too. Mrs. Brisbane chose both of them. Girls, I think I can trust you to stay here while I run this report down to the principal's office, Mrs. Brisbane told them. Of course, she could trust them. Once those girls were alone, they began to talk. I really liked your singing, Miranda told Saya. Thanks. My mom and I are going to a musical version of Cinderella over the college at the week over at the college this weekend, Miranda continued. We have an extra ticket. Would you like to come with us? My mom will pick you up. Saya quickly turned to face, to face Miranda. Oh yes, I have never been to a play before. Miranda grinned. Good, I'll have my mom call your mom. Suddenly, Saya's face fell. Oh, um, better not. She's so busy. Um, just give me your number and I'll have my father call your mother. Saya watched Miranda's reaction carefully. So did I. Cool, she said. And that was it. Miranda jotted down her number and Saya looked greatly relieved. I knew that Miranda's mother didn't care how well Saya's mother spoke English. Maybe now Saya would figure that out too. Another great thing happened that was Mrs. Brisbane started reading a book out loud to the class. Sometimes I doze right through those sessions, but this time she picked a really good book. When she announced that it was about a mouse, Gail giggled. What did she say? Art whispered to Richie. Pay attention, Art, Mrs. Brisbane said. I said it's about a mouse. Several of the boys groaned. Ugh. Baby stuff, one of them muttered. We'll see, Mrs. Brisbane told them. She started to read, and oh, what a tale it was! It was about mice no bigger than I am, who were great warriors. I was longing to put on some armor myself by the time she stopped reading. I'll continue this tomorrow, she announced as she stuck a bookmark in her place and closed the book. Tomorrow? That woman truly has a mean streak. She's proved it again. I would have sneaked out of my cage at night to finish the book. But she's so mean, she stuck it in her desk drawer. The one that she locked with the key. Grr. The weekend came around quickly, though, and I went home with Richie. I'm still not quite sure how many people actually live at the Rinaldi's house because there was always so many people coming and going. Aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, neighbors. One meal seemed to flow right into the next, and Richie's mom was very generous with the treats. I'll tell you one thing. You could never be lonely or hungry at the Rinaldi's house. On Sunday afternoon, guess who showed up? Remember Richie's uncle? That's right, Aldo Amato! This time, my buddy Aldo was not lonely because he brought his girlfriend Maria to meet the family. She was a very nice lady who wore her long hair piled up high on her head. She was dressed in bright red from head to toe. Red earrings, red sweater, red skirt, and red shoes. I think red is a very happy color. I think Maria is a very happy person, especially when she's with Aldo. All the Rinaldi's made a big fuss over Maria and praised the bread and cookies she'd brought from the bakery where she worked. After all the commotion of their arrival died down, I heard Aldo tell Maria, Now, there's someone really important I want you to meet. And he introduced her to me, me, me! Believe it or not, Humphrey is one of my best friends, he told her. And he was the very first friend I told about you. Ah, uh, then I am honored to meet you, Humphrey, Maria said, smiling down at me. The pleasure is all mine, I squeaked. See, he likes you, said Aldo, and indeed I did. The world seemed like a pretty nice place for a handsome young hamster like me, I tell you. I was sitting on top of the world when I returned to room 26 on Monday. But I just about toppled off of my... Sorry. But I just about toppled off when Mrs. Brisbane made an alarming announcement. Class, as you know, this will be a short week due to Thanksgiving, she said. And that means Humphrey will need a home for four days instead of two. Now, who wants to volunteer? You wouldn't believe what I'm going to say. Not one hand 
went up. I actually fell off my wheel. Mrs. Brisbane was surprised too. No one? She asked. Heidi, didn't you want to take Humphrey home? Oh, yes, but we're going to my grandma's house for Thanksgiving, she explained. Art, didn't you ask for Humphrey last week? Mrs. Brisbane asked. Yes, but we're having all my relatives for Thanksgiving, and Mom says it wouldn't be a good time, Art explained. And so it went. Every single classmate had big plans for Thanksgiving. Plans that didn't include having an extra hamster around. I was worried, worried, worried. I didn't want to spend four days alone in room 26. I worried all day Monday. I worried all day Tuesday. I worried even more all day Wednesday. At the end of the day, Principal Morales stopped by to give Mrs. Brisbane an envelope. I think it was her paycheck because she was especially glad to see him. I have a huge favor to ask, she said. Sure, Sue, what is it? asked Principal Morales. He wore a tie with little turkeys all over it. Could you possibly take Humphrey for the weekend? I had my paws crossed that he would say yes. But Principal Morales didn't even smile. Oh, Sue, I'd love to, but we're going out of town for the holiday, he told her. Another time, I'd love to. Another time wouldn't matter. I needed a place to go now. After the principal left, Mrs. Brisbane sighed and began gathering her papers. Then she turned to me. Well, Humphrey, it looks like you're going home with me for Thanksgiving, she said grimly. My fate was sealed. I was going to the home of the woman who had once vowed to get rid of me for four whole days. And frankly, I was worried I would never come back. That is the end of the chapter, friends. I'll do 13 um, tomorrow, which will be called Thanks But No Thanks. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Love you.